Legendary Polish metalheads Behemoth are one of my all-time favorite bands, and specifically the albums Evangelion and The Satanists stand out as some of my favorite all-time records. So when Hertz, the studio that tracked The Satanists, reached out to me to see if I would be interested in checking out their drum plugin, I was pretty ecstatic. I love the drum sound on The Satanist with its punchy, huge, and incredibly organic sound, so the idea that I could get that through a plugin was pretty exciting. So today, I'm going to show you the plugin and we're going to test it out and see if I can get that behemoth sound using Hertz drums. What's up friends and fellow metalheads, welcome to the channel. If you are checking out this video, then there's a good chance that you are also a fan of extreme metal. If so, tell me what your favorite album and specifically drum sounds are down in the comments below. If you have ever tried to record drums yourself, then you probably know how much time and care go into the process and Hertz shared some really interesting stuff with me about the sessions tracking drums for the Satanist. By the way, I've also been informed that they're adding the snare used on the Satanist to a future expansion pack, so make sure to keep your eyes peeled for that. They were so detailed in the production of the Satanists that they auditioned four different kits to make sure that they had the right drum sound, and they even went as far as to change drum heads for every song they recorded. Another detail I thought was pretty interesting is that they put a huge speaker underneath Inferno's drum throne so that he could actually feel the kick when he was playing since that's how he's used to performing when they play live. Now add to this attention to detail world-class equipment like their vintage Neumann overhead microphones they used for all the cymbals, which by the way the cymbals are probably the most impressive part of this plugin in my opinion. And also stuff like their two inch telephone containment machine, it's safe to say that the samples used in this plugin are going to be of the highest quality. So let's check out a demo song that I made and then after I'll walk you through the plugin and let you know how I'm using it. What's up guys, hopefully you enjoyed that song. I have an instance of Reaper opened up here and I'm gonna show you how I used the Hertz drums in that song. Let's just dive right into it here. So this is what the program looks like when you open it up here. But let's just start with one of the stock kits. Uh, we have the white, the blue, and the red packs. And there are different kits in each one. I will show you how to customize them here in just a minute. But uh, let's just go ahead and load up the metal kit and hear what that sounds like. And so right away, I think the included drum tones sound really awesome, but there's a lot of things we can do here. I'm gonna try and cover as much of this as possible in the video, but they do have a really, really great collection of tutorial videos on their website if you really need to go and deep dive into any of this. I'm just gonna give you an overview of how I'm using this kit and some things that I noticed along the way and maybe uh, some tips to help you along in your drum programming journey here. On the left kick here, I have some samples loaded up and same thing with the cowbell, I have you know, my secondary snare loaded up here. On the toms, I actually loaded the second tom. I thought this number one tom was a little bit too high pitched for me. It sounded a little bit too small. I like low deep toms. So I loaded up the second tom as my high tom and same going down, I loaded up the third tom as my secondary tom, the fourth tom as my third rack tom, the fifth tom as my floor tom, and then down here, the second floor tom, I have the fifth Tom loaded up as well, but I went in and I pitch shifted this down by about negative 2.2, so. 
just to give it a little bit of distinction from the other one so it does sound like a deeper, different drum. And these are all toms from the blue pack. Uh, you can see the cymbals here are from the red pack. The kick drum is also from the red pack. You can see it's the Oyster 2414. And then the snare is from the red pack as well. We have the deep 6.5 by 13 inch. So that's how I have the drum set set up. Let's hear what it sounds like. Let's hear it with all the instruments. We have the mixer and you can adjust the levels of each drum individually. You can also select the drum by clicking on it. So like, let's say we select the snare here and you have a whole host of options on this side. You can select between three different microphones. You can change the pitch. You can change how much you want that drum in the overheads, the sub, or uh, how much effects you want on that microphone. So here, let me show you. If we take the effects off and we turn the effects all the way up, we get like a much more compressed and EQ'd sort of sound. We also have the ambience, so you can control how much is in the room, how much is in the reverb, um, and you know, it's on this X, Y axis, so you can just drag it around. It's really, really nice. I like that touch a lot. Uh, we have velocity controls here, so if you wanna change the dynamic range, you can do that. We also have reverse here, so if you wanna make the hits reverse. I used a reverse cymbal at the beginning of this song, and if I wanted to, I could have programmed one of the drums to do the reverse cymbal hit. Uh, I actually did it old school and recorded the cymbal sound and then reversed it in my DAW, but you could do it that way. You could just have one of your drums be a reverse cymbal. And then down here on the bottom, we can adjust the dynamics, so you can adjust the attack, you can adjust the decay, sustain, all of that good stuff. Very, very versatile, very easy to use, very clean layout. I really like this layout a lot. Uh, now you have your mixer down on the bottom with all of your different drums, but you can actually go into the groups and I find this super helpful because normally what I would do is I would bus out all my drums into groups and then I would mix the groups together. So they already do that for you. And it's just really, really helpful and convenient and really just helps you be more efficient when you're mixing your drums. And then down on the bottom, we have our master volume and our master dynamics. So if you wanna turn the dynamics for the whole kit and make it sound like your drummer's hitting harder than the MIDI notes are programmed, you could just turn that master dynamics knob up and uh, your drummer will be hitting super, super hard. I have this set at about 22, so it's a little bit hard. Next we have the library sampler here, and this is where you can actually change your different drums for your set and really get in and start customizing your set. So I have the snare selected here, and you can see we have mic A, mic B, and mic C. Right now we are on mic C slot seven, which uh, if you look at the instrument right here, it's a steel 6.5 inch by 14 inch from the blue pack. Let's say maybe we wanna load something from the red pack here. We can audition them by left clicking. And then once we find a drum we like, we can right click and that will now change that instrument in our drum kit. And that's all well and good, but let's say we wanna start layering things up. I really like layering my drums, at least the kick and the snare. I think it can really just add a lot to the drum sound. So what you need to do here is you need to go into one of your drums that like you're not gonna use. So I use this cowbell right here. Uh, so let's go into our cowbell and under group selection, we're actually gonna go to sampler. Now you have the sampler loaded up here and you can select how many dynamic groups you want. All of the samples that I have are split into three dynamic groups. So I'm just gonna select three. And then you're gonna select your different groups. You have group one, which ranges in velocity from one to 49. I'm go ahead and press load. I'm gonna find, oh look, the drums that I want are right here, luckily. I'm gonna go ahead and find the softer hits, which are these ones here. I'm gonna select all of the softer hits, open, and now they're loaded. And now I can do the same thing again with the mid hits. I only have two of them. I'm gonna do those. And then now with the hard hits. And now we have two snares layered on top of each other. Now. This is the sampled snare right here. In order for those snare hits to hit on the same MIDI note, uh, you will need to adjust which MIDI note triggers it. So if we go over here to the MIDI routing, the first thing that you'll notice is you have a drop down here and you can change 
the default MIDI routing, which is really, really awesome, especially if you are loading up Hertz drums on a song that you previously recorded with uh, Easy Drummer, or maybe you use Easy Drummer for the songwriting features. You can really easily just select Easy Drummer 2 on here, for example, and uh, it will automatically detect all the hits and route them to the correct drums. So that's very, very helpful. Now you can see here on snare articulation one, we have D1 selected. Uh, so down here on, what do we replace the cowbell? So you can see here on the cowbell, if we open this up, I have not only the default C sharp dash two selected, but D1 as well. So that is why I'm able to trigger the snare sample off the cowbell, which might be a little bit confusing at first here, but just know that all of the drums in the Hertz kit can be replaced with whatever samples you would like and you can route it however you would like to. It's super, super flexible. Let's go back over here. We have a groove section. They're separated out. You know, you have this sort of like sampler looking interface and they're separated out into intros, ends, beats, fills. You can select different time signatures, different tempos, and we can play them back and listen to them. We can double the speed or decrease the speed by half. Beats over here. Very helpful if you want to use Hertz as a songwriting tool. Uh, you can grab this little navigation looking button here and just drag these MIDI grooves in there if you so desire. If you go over here to this little cog, uh, you have your audio libraries, you have your MIDI libraries, if you wanna load up your MIDI grooves, whatever. And then you have different modes. You have low, medium, and high performance. So at low performance, we won't be using much of our CPU. It'll be very light. So this is really good, you know, if you don't have a lot of CPU power, or if you just wanna be able to run through and edit things very quickly without them taking a while to load up. This is what it sounds like. Still sounds very good. Let's listen to the same thing at high performance. So the thing that I'm noticing right away, and I'm sitting here listening through studio monitors, I don't know how well this is gonna translate through YouTube on the other end, but just giving you uh, my perception of what's going on is I hear so much more detail, especially in the cymbals, and that's always something with MIDI drums that is always a little bit lacking. Like the cymbals always sound a little bit, I don't know, not so great. And uh, I think they sound really, really good here, especially running in high performance mode. So that's why I prefer to run in that mode. You can route out each drum's direct microphone, uh, its sub microphone, its effects. You can route that out however you want. So it just gives you a ton of flexibility in the mixing stages. So maybe you wanna go in here and turn the effects off on all of your drums and just run those out dry or run the effects or process drums out to another channel. You can do it that way. There's just a ton of flexibility here. It's very, very cool. All right, so let me know what you guys think of this plugin down below. I'm always really excited to mix it up with you guys down in the comments. I personally think that this plugin is sort of the best of both worlds. It's fully functional with songwriting tools, and while they may not be as robust as something like Easy Drummer, I think the core functions songwriters need are there. But where this plugin really shines for me is in the quality and the ease of use. Within 15 minutes of loading it up, I was able to figure out how to do most of the things and only had to look up one tutorial on their website, which their tutorials on the website are awesome, by the way. And the sound quality is fantastic. You can blend in effects processed signals to taste or route the drums out to process with your own effects. It's just very, very flexible in that way. And I'm not super surprised. After talking to the guys over at Hertz and learning about some of the things they did when they were tracking drums, it seems like the kind of plugin a very thoughtful engineer and producer would make with the features they themselves would want in a plugin. So it's highly likely that I will be using this on my demos going forward, and if you are interested in it, I would have no problem recommending it to you. All right, if you guys have made it this far, thank you. Make sure to do all the things down there, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.